Hello friends, welcome to my video. In this video, we're going to look at Kube controllers. A controller is responsible for two things mainly. One is to monitor the current state of a resource or more than one resource. And if the current state of these resources are not the same as the desired state, controller will basically do things to bring it closer to the desired state. Well, you have multiple controllers in a Kubernetes uh, cluster. So there are some built-in controllers like deployment controller, job controller, cron job controller, a node controller, a stateful set, a replica set, etc. You can actually guess like what kind of resources they control from the name of these names of these controllers. And you can also write uh, your own custom controllers, you know, if none of these built-in controllers can be used for your use case. And also one nuance is that like multiple controllers could be managing the same kind of Kubernetes object. For example, like a deployment controller could be creating or uh, deleting pods. And the same is true for job controllers. You know, when a job is submitted to Kubernetes, that will require a certain number of pods to be running. So a job controller could trigger a pod creation as well. These like deployment controller pods and job controller pods, like they're totally different, right? They're separate from each other. So a deployment controller will not do anything with the pods created by job controller and vice versa. And also if you look at controllers, like most of the times actually they are talking to the API server the kube api server to make things happen for example like creating a pod uh, api server in that case like when it needs to create a pod it creates a pod object and it doesn't assign a node scheduler will come and find a, a worker node for it and then kubelet will will create the the pod on that node actually right so but the the whole thing starts when the controller talks to the API server and this is what happens like most of the times actually there are a few cases where these controllers interact with something that is external to the kubernetes cluster for example cloud provider apis actually as in like a aws api right imagine that like a controller is is doing auto scaling right so let's say like for some reason the number of nodes in this cluster need to be increased right in that case this controller a custom controller will interact with uh like let's say aws api to create a node you know in case it is trying to scale up so this is basically like a direct control because a controller is directly doing things. Uh, it is directly accessing a, a cloud provider API uh, to satisfy or fulfill that use case actually. So that's basically what I've learned and I hope you learned a couple of things from this video as well. I'll see you guys in my next video and if you want to keep learning like this, uh, a few tidbits every day uh, then subscribe to my channel i will post videos regularly i'll try to educate you guys i'll share all my knowledge so don't forget to subscribe and do comment and let me know what you want to learn from me thank you